Today we are taking a look at the Bogner Ecstasy 353451. Now just to avoid any confusion, there are several Bogner Ecstasies. There's even another 3534 that is a 35 watt and that one's all black. You'll see. This could be a little confusing. It, it threw me off a little bit in the beginning, but the best way to think of it is Bogner Ecstasy is not just one thing. In fact, there's the 100A, 101A, 101B, the classic, the anniversary, there's the mini, there's the 3534, 35 watt. The Bogner Ecstasy sound is, it's an iconic sound. If I heard that without seeing a label on it, I go, oh, that's a Bogner Ecstasy sound. It's a big, uh, the word woody gets thrown around a lot. It's a big woody, fat mid-range with a nice low mid sort of like presence in there. It's pretty unique in the sort of world of high gain stuff. But man, what really knocked my socks off was the channel one, the low gain channel on this. Channel one is one of the most beautiful clean channels I've ever heard. EL34s, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Check out some of my other videos I did where I was using this as a pedal platform. It takes pedals incredibly well. For everything, the opening song and, and stuff later, I'm at pretty low volume. I'm sitting right next to a 412. Uh, you know, it's, it's healthy, but it's not super loud. I recorded everything at that volume. Uh, when you get it cranked, oh, dude, it, it turns to like, really gets heavenly there. So where does this sit in terms of the Bogner sonic spectrum? Reinhold said he voiced this more like the Ecstasy 100s. The 35 watt Bogner Ecstasy is more aggressive and scooped. This is more mid forward, more classic. But where I love it is where it's riding that balance between aggressive and really big, not scooped. I like having that big, broad, warm mid range, like uh, Andy Timmons and uh, I mean the leads like Eric Johnson and that singing tone like Steve Vai, where it's just like it just leads just ooze out of the guitar. Uh, the feel on this is great, and the sound on this is great. It is not a subsonic thunderous beast uh, like the 101B can be when you plug it in next to it. This is much more of sort of a classic mid-punch. Uh, they can get really close. Uh, we did AB and it's it can get real close. But the, uh, the 100 water just has a little more like coming up. Uh, and yet, uh, the size and the sweetness and the Channel One gloriousness, uh, and I did end up falling in love with the gain channels too, uh, especially working on that opening song. It just was like, I'm really enjoying this. So Let's dive in a little deeper. I'll show you the controls and uh, we'll plug in and hear some more tones. Let's take a look at the XTC 50 watts controls. The best way to start is set all of the voicing switches to the center. It's my favorite position. Uh, quite frankly, if they weren't there, I would be perfectly fine with that. Uh, it still sounds uh, dope. Starting from the left, there is the uh, presence. This is channel one. Channel two has a shared EQ, although there's a separate gain, channel two, gain channel three, and a separate volume for channel two and channel three. So here's your channel one. And here's your channel two and three. There's also a boost. All of this is controllable by the foot switch. See, we got a boost. Or you can do it from the front panel, which is just the best. Being able to scroll through your sounds without the foot switch, even though this foot switch is the perfect size and, um, and is great. The voicing switches on the 50 watt are pretty straightforward, actually. You have channel one, two, and three. There is bright one and bright two. They're essentially bright voicings. It's not as simple as just like, oh, it's a little brighter. It does fairly radically alter the voicing of that channel. Um, so you will have to sort of adjust the EQ to compensate, I feel like. This over here is uh, the excursion on the bigger ecstasies, what it felt like. It may be negative feedback and sort of a depth control rolled into one. Uh, on the 50 watt, it feels more like a sort of negative feedback kind of situation. Um, there is deep, loose, and tight, which is a holdover from the original Ecstasy heads. So the excursion sort of sets up as a, uh, a feel for the overall sonic spectrum of the amp, if you will. 
The rear of the amp has an effects loop. It's where you plug in the foot switch. There's a line out. Here is your speaker outs, which are individual. I kind of like that better than the switching. It, it just, there's less room for error for me. Uh, and there you go. And the power button's on the back. The front has a standby switch. <laughs>
that is the Bogner Ecstasy 50 watt from Bogner Amplification. So where do you get one of these? They're in stores. Oh, well, that's cool. Uh, I'll put a link below. You can follow that if you like. If not, go to the store of your choice. And uh, there's no really website to speak of, but there's a lot of information on the store sites. Bogner Ecstasy's have been around for years, so uh, just ask somebody, right? There you go. Thank you for Reinhold for letting me use this. Um, I don't think it's going back to him. Let me just put it right over here.